Hi, my name is Dan, and I'm a senior solution architect at Cast AI. If you're running Kubernetes, you'll most likely be familiar with the problem I'm about to cover today. There's this never-ending balancing act of making sure teams get enough resources for their needs, but at the same time keeping the infrastructure costs in check. Plus, all of this has to happen without working an insane number of hours or being woken up in the middle of the night due to out-of-capacity errors in production. I'll soon demonstrate how to handle everything I'm mentioning with automation. There's quite a lot to cover, and each Kubernetes consumer has their own unique workloads. So I'll start off with a broad overview and then shed light on more detailed aspects as well. Right now you're viewing the console home screen. This is where you'll see a list of all your connected Kubernetes clusters, whichever cloud they may be on. I'm going to select one of my clusters and we can examine it together. So what I'm showing right now is the list of nodes used by my cluster. Now, this is the before state. This is what we see with most of the clusters we've encountered prior to enabling our platform. The level of actual compute power consumed by the workloads, meaning what has been committed for the workloads in terms of requests, ranges between 30% and 60%, averaging at 50% at best. Now, Cast AI's platform leverages multiple techniques and mechanisms to ensure optimal cost savings. But I'll start off with one of the more fundamental mechanisms, which is bin packing. If you're not familiar with bin packing, I'll try to explain it in broad terms. Basically, all it means is that we are gracefully relocating the pods so they consume the most of the provisioned hardware and therefore eliminate any waste. Now, I'm going to show you a different cluster where Cast AI bin packing mechanism has been enabled. So what we see here are the nodes of a cluster that is running with our automated bin packing mechanism. I want to draw your attention to two things. First of all, notice how we are consuming most of the provisioned infrastructure. Just as a quick reminder, this does not mean the nodes are at 100% utilization. It just means that what has been requested by the workloads has been allocated for them. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that we have a mixture of both spot and on-demand instances. We support all types of combinations and have cost savings and optimizations that can be applied to any type of requirement, whether it's only spot or only on-demand or a mixture of both. Our bin packing mechanism works continuously in the background and optimizes the efficiency of infrastructure consumption. You don't have to manage and maintain it in order to reduce waste which results in cost reduction. Now let's take a look at how to enable bin packing. I've stepped back to my own demo cluster and going to head on to the autoscaler configuration next. This is the core location for most of the configurations. Basically, it replaces the default cloud autoscaler. It has multiple ways in which it's way superior and provides additional cost savings. I will explore this a bit more later but the key takeaway is we have an autoscaler that works in the background and ensures scaling up and scaling down is done in an efficient way. Now, in order to enable bin packing, I will enable the node deletion policy. This will enable us to automatically orchestrate the deletion of unneeded infrastructure, which is part of scaling down. On top of that, I'm going to add the evictor, and this will enable us to do bin packing. This too can be done gracefully, so we do not have to interfere with any single replica workloads. All I have to do is basically save this and let the magic begin. Let's now examine additional ways we can use to get even more cost savings. This is our available savings page. Here, you can get insights into what other cost savings can be gained by enabling additional policies. Bear in mind, none of these toggles actually make active changes to the cluster. Notice the initial cost of the cluster. This will dramatically decrease over time as we have enabled auto-scaling with bin packing previously. Now let's take a look at a few more options. One of the core capabilities of the platform is rebalancing. 
our rebalancer automatically picks the most cost-effective node placement for our workloads. This is the current node configuration, 9 standard DS2 V2 machines, 18 CPUs, 63 gigs of RAM. I'll cover and demonstrate how the rebalancer works. Basically, it replaces these workloads sitting on these machines onto more cost-effective machines to eliminate waste. Keep in mind this is just on-demand instances, no spot instances, which comes to show there's a lot to be gained even without employing spot. But what would happen if we do choose to leverage spot Notice how there's 17 more percent to be gained, and this is just spot-friendly workloads. We recognize these by using multiple criteria. You can see these workloads here. I know there is a lot of hesitation amongst engineers when it comes to spot instances, as they do suffer from interruptions from time to time but we have multiple ways of mitigating that risk. We constantly scan the marketplace to detect lack of machines ahead of time. We support fallback so we can place the workloads onto on-demand nodes and back to spot once there is more availability. And we also leverage all nodes, families, shapes, and sizes to maximize the potential replacement in case of interruption. Maintaining hundreds of node groups and constantly scanning prices is a time and effort consuming task. We alleviate that with automation. Another option is the cluster scheduler. Notice how much more can be gained. The scheduler basically hibernates the cluster during off hours like weekends. This comes in handy, especially for dev clusters or sales engineering demo clusters. Now that we've seen some of the key options of gaining cost savings and we've also seen the bin packing mechanism, let's see how to onboard a new cluster onto the platform. Just before we go, I'd like to give this a refresh. We went down from 900 to 600 and this will continue to decrease up to about 400. Now let's continue on to onboarding a new cluster. Onboarding a new cluster is straightforward, but before we go ahead and add one, I want to explain the concept of two main steps to fully enabling our platform. The first step is to install a read-only agent. This will provide you the initial insights, so you can understand the ROI and how much you can save with automation. The second step is a read-write phase, where we also are capable of actually orchestrating the cluster, doing bin packing, auto-scaling, and so forth. This can be done using a script or using infrastructure as code with Terraform. All you have to do is choose your cloud and run this command from a console connected to your cluster. The agent itself is open source. You can see exactly what are the verbs the cluster role contains and what data it can actually access. As you see, it's just get, list, watch. You can also see the resources, pods, nodes, and so on. What I can add on top of that is that we only send metadata to our platform, we do assessments, and then we're able to provide cost savings, automation, and insights. No logs, secrets, or any other sensitive data gets sent. Now let's head over to the rebalancer. The rebalancer picks the most suitable and cost-efficient infrastructure for your applications. Its algorithm is built to ensure a safe shift of workloads. Let's see that in action. I'm going to prepare a new plan. This will allow me to select which nodes I want to enroll in this. I'm going to select all my nodes, and I'm going to generate a plan. We can see that it's possible to save almost 50% by moving from four of these nodes into these two kinds of nodes. I'm going to click Rebalance and let it run. As I mentioned, the first step is to create the nodes. This will take some time, and I'm not going to have you wait to see the entire process, but you can see the actual phases. Creating the nodes. Draining the nodes, and only after they're drained, they're going to get deleted. If you do have workloads that are sensitive and do not have graceful restart strategy embedded in them, 
You can also choose to schedule a rebalance act at specific hours, or choose to select smaller amount of nodes instead of all the nodes as I've selected, and then break it down into multiple events. The key takeaway is that our automation and AI will pick the right infrastructure and migrate your workloads in the most considerate way. Now that we've seen how the rebalancer works, let's head over to the cost savings to learn more about cost monitoring, but also see an additional way to optimize costs. Cost monitoring enables you to zoom in on the biggest cost of vendors, enabling you to optimize based on the most consuming workloads. It provides you a granular perspective. Whether it's the cluster as a whole or finding which namespace costs the most, likely associated with a team, an application, or a project. It also enables you to create your own special perspective via allocations groups by selecting namespaces and labels, or by pinpointing workloads. As you can see here, this green line represents how much is actually used, and the blue line what is actually provisioned for this workload. You can see exactly how much waste we have, and we also have recommendations for each workload There's quite a lot more that I haven't covered, and I would love to cover that in a personal demo to help you save money, but also help your engineers focus on what really matters to them. So to recap what we've covered, the first thing you saw has been packing, which eliminates waste in current provisioned infrastructure. The second thing is rebalancing, which quickly migrates workloads to the most cost-efficient infrastructure. And we also discussed how Cast AI leverages Spot and adds additional cost savings while maintaining cluster reliability and resiliency. Thank you for watching.